there's so many people want a job in it. You've got to make sure you're different from the rest and, and work harder than the rest. I'm David Moyes, previously been managers of Preston North End, Everton, Manchester United, Real Sociedad, Sunderland, West Ham. I may well have forgotten someday there, but uh, hopefully I've not. Well, I would have been really interested because, you know, probably education wasn't the thing I was most interested in. I was interested in football and sport, and uh, fortunately enough I went on to become a professional player. But I think if I hadn't got to that level, I was really keen in Probably doing something like at that time, you could only really become a PE teacher if you wanted to be in sport at, at school. I think the amount of opportunities there is now for, for the, the young ones to do different courses at university, college, whatever it may well be, I think is fantastic. And I think this course, what they've got here, has got a big uh, direction on football and the football industry. Uh, and I think it's something which I'd really be interested in, yeah. Well, the appeal for me is always to be to work abroad. I don't think that we get enough uh, British managers' jobs in the big leagues in Europe, for example, Spain, Germany, Italy. Uh, I don't think we, we export more managers. I think we're ha we bring an awful lot of people into to our really good leagues. But I would like to see more get out. And the opportunity for me to go to Spain was something which I, I, I wanted. It was an opportunity to I think probably play against the two best teams in, in the world over the, in the last decade really in, in Barcelona and Real Madrid and I think for me it was a chance to experience a, a different culture, a different lifestyle and it's something I would definitely recommend. Uh, what I would recommend if you get the jobs is, is try and do a bit better than I did with the language. I, I, I was desperately trying to learn Spanish to, to be able to communicate more often in Spanish. But if I had a, something which I'd like to say that I could do better, it would have been trying to pick up the language much quicker. I think the way I worked was I, I was really dedicated and hard working and, and always looking to improve. And I think that I wouldn't change that because I, I done an awful lot of things where you have to give your time up and summer holidays and you know you have to be, put yourself out. I think. I think if you're not going to work hard at it, and you don't have a real love for the game and a drive to succeed, then you won't succeed. I was driven to, to try and get to the, a, a high level if I could be, not necessarily thinking that I was going to become a Premier League manager, but hoping that maybe I would get a job in, in football somewhere when my, when my career came to an end. My advice would be that if you, if you don't really want it, it will get shown up and people will find you out. And I think you have to be able to, to be willing to commit yourself totally to it. And uh, you know, many people have got other things in their life they have to do, families, other parts of it. But I think if you're getting into football, there's so many people want a job in it. You've got to make sure you're different from the rest and, and work harder than the rest. First of all, I'd say when you, you're involved with football, in, in the early years, I knew all about the finance, the players' contracts, the, the deals, everything, because you're working with the club and you're getting to understand how much you might get to spend, what sort of players you could go for, how much room you've got in the wages. So you have to understand the finances. That's really important. I also think now because of the way media is, that you need to understand uh, the role of the media officer. And in some cases, there might be a case for managers having their own media person, not necessarily the one who's employed by, by the football club. So I do think that there's, there's a lot in media, the social media plays a big big part of it now. Uh, some people are in it, some aren't, I'm not. Uh, so I think that that's a big thing. And I also think that you can't go to a big football club now and not understand the marketing, that you have to make yourself available or the players available uh, because the club does need to sell jerseys, it needs to sell other merchandise, tickets, etc. as well for other areas of the football club. So I think as a football manager, you need to understand all the aspects. And a big thing for me is the academy, that you understand you know, your, your young players, how it works, how they're doing, you know, what players you've got coming through for the future. So I think there's many aspects of, of being a manager which sometimes go, go unrecognised. No, I think it's become a bigger a bigger case now and I think the pressures have grown because you can see how long it, the time the managers might only have in the job, you know, your you know, managers are getting talked about if they don't win a game, you know, they might lose their job. So I think the pressure's growing. I think you have an inbuilt system. You know what you should listen to, what you should look at, what you shouldn't do. 
But I also think that the clubs are now uh, recognising, you know, there, there is mental health issues at a lot of the clubs and I think it won't be long till the clubs are employing people who can deal with that themselves, whether it be specific types of doctors or whether it be specific people, psychologists who can deal with it. I think it's been becoming a much bigger part of the football clubs now in understanding. But as a manager, I think when you go into the job, you have to understand and realise that, hey, it's not going to be easy. And also, you're not going to win all the time. And when you're not winning all the time, probably means that you're going to come in for, for quite a bit of scrutiny. Well, I'm not too sure that the word mental health was out maybe eight, nine, ten years ago. I think if you use the word mental health then, it would have been seen as something much more uh, hospital orientated. I think now we use it more, but going back, we've had psychologists at the football clubs where quite often would, would be involved with the team motivation, but also you would have given the, the players the chance to say, if you want to speak to this person individually on any concerns, you know, you were free to do so. But I think where, where we are seeing now is that there's many more issues involved in, in life, not just football, in life. And I think that, uh, I think people who are counsellors and people who can listen are really important. And I do think that having people like that around football clubs in a business where, you know, you're quite openly criticised, uh, you know, there's a lot of pressure on you, how you play, uh, quite often for a lot of people that can become, become too big. So I think it's important that we have people around to help. But I also think that the sport we're in, you know, sort of gives you the chance to express yourself and go out and perform. And I think if you come into football, you have to experience that that's what's going to happen to you and that you're not going to have lot, lots of protection because you're, you're open to criticism, you're open to the media, you're open to supporters. But I think for the clubs to have, to have support at the club would, is, is going to be a big thing in the future going forward. First of all, I look for, I want loyalty, uh, first and foremost, and I want, I do want people who can coach, who understand the game, so that I can tell them, you know, afternoon sessions you're going to take me, you've got the boys, or the, some of the mornings, I want them to be in charge, and I want them to be of a, at a level that they're able to do that. But I also want them to be incredibly hard working. I want them to be able to go and view games at night, scout players, uh, watch your young teams play. But I think more importantly then, be, be a big assistance to me in the, in the decisions which I have to make daily. And I think having good assistance uh, makes your job much, much easier. Well, I think you have to get the qualifications to get, give yourself that, that position, first of all, whether it be a coaching qualification or whether it be your exams to get into the media side of it. I think you have to make sure that you're that and then I do think that you need to try and get yourself into clubs in a placement, whether it be a youth coach or whether it be in the marketing department. I think getting yourself in and seeing how the clubs work I think gives you the best insight to see exactly what's required of you in your role and I think for many young people the football industry is employing so many people nowadays and I can only see it growing uh, and especially with the amount of young people for example who are on this course. You know, it's a big world, it doesn't need to be in the UK, you could work abroad, you could work in Asia now. Football's a, a really growing sport in, in countries which maybe haven't been quite so known for it, even, even the Middle East for example. And I think if you go out, you should go out looking to try and find roles which suit you and getting as much work experience as you can.